when I tell you that I have literally almost killed myself from working so hard in this business, I mean it because it's not a difficult business, but all you have to do is just put a little bit of effort into it and that's what you get back out of it. So ignoring the parties, ignoring all the weekends and, and doing the three open houses every Saturday, Sunday, to me, that was the hard work. Watching Ricky's podcast, listening, educating myself. If, if I had a, a half hour to myself, I would be listening to something. I'd be educating myself. I wouldn't be, you know, putting or, or playing golf or whatever. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Road to 10,000. Me and my guy Juan are back at it. Uh, man, it's been a fun ride so far, huh? We've done about 10 episodes now. We, we've done 10 episodes. We're getting some major guests for the month of April. We're locking down the heavy hitters, man. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, me too, man. We got a we got Bradley and Grant Cardone. <laughs> That's a cool pair. Yeah, yeah. Some more in the pipeline. Don't want to say too much too soon. Also, I'm going on tour, man. Like I'm literally going to be cleared May 1st to go out and speak again. So I'm putting together some dates coming real soon. I'm working on a Miami date. I'm working on a Nashville date. I'm working on a Charleston date, Charlotte date, an Atlanta date, a Houston date. Got a lot of cool stuff happening. You, you have a, a full blown uh, tour over there, man. Yeah. You're going to rap on, you're going to rap on stage as well. No, that that's all I do. Like I show up and just rap like it's real estate raps, but it's not like the quote unquote, like, <laughs> actually, I don't want to say the word like and have people tear me so, apart. So, so check, check, check this out. Little shout out to uh, Nathan Mills. I think he's based out of Minnesota. He uh, recorded the first real estate rap video. It's called escrow. And the thing is fire. The beats good. The production is made. He's rapping about getting an accepted offer. So I got to give him a little shout out. We're going to be promoting his video later this week. Cool. You say the first real estate rap video. The first good one I've seen, you know, I haven't seen that. Message. Oh, okay. The first good one. When, yeah. when, when did he do it? Uh, I think he lo launched it about a week ago, but we're going to, how can you, how can you sit here and act like he was like a pioneer in the, <laughs> in the real estate rap world? I mean, well, well, well our, 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 our new, our ago. new guest is, is recording music videos, riding it on horses. So I don't know there's a, there's an answer for that. <laughs> no, you, you're like, this guy re did the very first, Real estate <laughs> rap video last week. <laughs> hey, come on, bro. First to ever do it. We're, yeah, so, gotta hype him up, man. Start, I'm gonna man. start fact checking you. <laughs> so, right. so check this out. For for this week's guest, we have a huge rock star out of Long Island, New York. His name is Dan O'Neill, and uh, Dan and his team. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You guys closed sixty million dollars last year in total volume. Yeah, something like that. Fifty-eight. And Dan, how long you been doing this? Um, so my third year anniversary was two weeks ago. So through three years, 60 million in three years, Ricky, I don't think we've had a guest close that much that fast. Have we? Nice. Nice. 60 million in three years. What's your team dynamics? Tell us. Three years. No, no, no. That was last year. Come on. Yeah. No, no, no. I understand. You've only been in the business three years though. There. Yes. Sir. All right. That's what I'm saying. You've only been in the business three years and you close 60 mil in a year. I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. Come on guys. Get the, get Honestly, in the game here, guys. I appreciate you guys having me on here. Uh, Juan, I love you, man. I, I look up to you. And uh, same thing, Ricky. I, I remember when you came to Long Island two and a half years ago and we watched you. So it's an honor to be here. Super cool. And uh, yeah, excited to, uh, to do this with you guys. Give me, give me the team dynamics. Like how many on your team? What are their roles? Like break it all down for me. Sure. So uh, I first got started. I was by myself. I had some success. I did pretty well. I was getting really, really busy. So I thought it was a, a good idea to join a team because I needed help. You know, I was doing three open houses every Saturday, Sunday. Like I would literally drop my signs, do the open house. Someone shows up five minutes late at the end of the first one. Then I'm 30 minutes late to the second. Then I'm going to the third. It was just a nightmare every Saturday, Sunday. So I joined the team thinking that that would help. You know, I could have other people do my open houses while on the team. You know, it was there for about six months and then finally just decided, all right, you know what? I probably did that in reverse. Let me go and start my own team. So after seeing, you know, people like Juan and, and other uh, people my age succeed, so then I started my own team. I was fortunate enough to have, you know, three or four that, that joined up with me right away, kind of trusting me blindly. They came on as more so buyers, agents, you know, kind of hybrids. Um, I don't really have any sort of distinct uh, designations for them. They just came on and we <laughs> kind of winged it. And uh, now the team, I guess a year and a half later, I think we just brought on our 14th agent. What's most exciting about all of that is the fact that every single person that has joined up with me, I think except for maybe two people, 
one of their the reasons that it didn't work out was because they got too many leads. I swear to God, that was their that was the reason. And the second uh, person only put 10 hours a week into real estate, so it just didn't work out for her. But you know, if there's 16 people that have joined the team so far, 14 of them have succeeded. It's the best feeling in the world. It's cooler to say that than it is to say that I did 60 million last year. That's incredible, Matt. And now you have all these people on your team. What's your role in day to day? Are you still producing alongside with them? Are you managing them? Like, what's your role as a team leader? It's a mix of everything. Uh, we were talking about it before we came on. You know, you kind of jumped out of production and started more so the management side of things. That's kind of the direction I'm going into. I'm starting to now leverage my time a little bit better. Uh, so that way I can focus on on things that I want to focus on. I had a pretty big revelation, I guess that's a word, maybe about six months ago. And the same day I put out a three and a half million dollar listing, the same day I was spending eight hours chasing a lockbox down because some agent put it in their pocket for a $120,000 co-op. So I'm like, all right, maybe I need to start spending my time a little bit wiser. So you know, now I'm leveraging the team a little bit more so that way they can focus on those things and, and I can spend my time and energy on maybe more time productive things. But to answer your question, it's it's both. It's pr production and management. Perfect. And you scaled pretty fast. Like, did you start putting ads like ads out there that you were hiring? Did you just attract them through social media? Like, what was your way to really bring these people on board with you? One ad. The only ad I ever put out was for my was for my assist, like executive assistant, transaction coordinator. Never once have recruited anybody. Never messaged anybody. I don't want to. You know, like like you guys are are going in the direction of road to ten thousand. You know, you you're building out this global team, right? I don't want that. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that. You know? So it's interesting, you know, people reach out to me all the time because they see on social media and they see us doing well. They think we have the secret sauce, which is really just hard work. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I've never once really recruited and I'm very fortunate in that, but it's just not the direction I want to go in. I don't want to have a team of 20. I mean, you guys know how crazy it is when you're teaching and training. I don't want to have a team of 30 people of which 20 don't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. So your team of 14 are all like heavy producers. You're saying? I would probably say eight, eight of them, eight of them are doing like really, really, really well. Um, okay. There's two or three that are probably within the first two or three months. Um, and then there's maybe one or two that haven't really hit their groove yet, but you know how the first six months to a year can be in this business. So they're kind of just, they're going through it, but I would say overwhelmingly more than half of them are doing right. incredibly well. Right. What, what is the secret to keeping a top producer on your team where you're basically taking part of their money for, I mean, you know, let's face it, they can go do their own business and create their own business. How do you retain a high producer in that old school team model? Yeah. So I see it all the time with, with teams in my office, uh, teams that we're familiar with where it's like a revolving door, you know, they build somebody up, they do five, six transactions and then they're out the door. So knock on wood, I've been very fortunate that not one person that has started with me, even though they're doing 250, 350 and GCI has left. And I think it's just because of the culture that I've built. It's very similar to like, a, a bad sports team almost, right? Like I'm, I'm a huge hockey fan. So I love the Islanders. The Islanders are a super young team, right? They have a great coach and they're all very bought into each other. So, you know, somebody gets hit against the boards, everyone's jumping that guy and, and they're fighting, right? So everybody has each other's back. And I think it's just the culture that we built. Everybody roots for each other. There's no, uh, you know, undercutting each other. None of that. It's just, it's a really good uh, environment. So everyone enjoys it. I hope. <laughs> So they give up part of their commission for a really good environment, basically? Oh, no. I mean, that's just, that was just me answering your question. I mean, you have to figure the reputation that we've built, right? So if Juan has a listing, I'm able to shoot him a text and, and maybe that goes a long way in getting an accepted offer, all the off-market property that we have, all the knowledge, all the training. Um, I pay for all the different media, all the content. Yeah. Um, they have access yeah. to 45,000 followers on my personal page. Um, I mean, it's a million different intangibles that go mm -hmm. along with it. And at the yeah. end of the day, for you, for you to go somewhere and get maybe a 90, 10 or 80, whatever it might be to lose that five or 10% or whatever the case is, are you really, are you going to feel that if I'm able to get you 10 more deals, 15 more deals, five more deals? Well, really if you're doing a million dollars, if you're doing a million dollars a year, I mean, 5% is 50,000, 10% is 100,000. But could I get you 10 more deals where you can make that money? 100%. Any buyer lead that comes through, all I can the only handle. I can only handle so much, though. You know what I mean? Like I can only handle. I can't do ten. I'm max. I'm maxed out. I'm maxed out making a million. That's all I can make. I well, can't do anymore. Ruth and get some good training. What's up? I said then they need to call you and get some better training so they can do yeah, more business. Yeah. Oh no, no 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 no. I just I just think it's interesting because like the way I see it, this is the way I see it. It's like the old traditional team model like that you have. From to me, to me, this is just my opinion. 
to me, I look at that and I see, I see a model that really only retains not the highest of producers. Like if you have somebody that's doing a million dollars a year, they're probably mm -hmm. not going to stay with you. And right. so I'm fearing to say that the guys that you have aren't doing a million dollars a year. If you did have a guy doing a million dollars a year, he's not going to stay there. And so for me, it's only retaining people doing a lower, you know, lower production than like top, top. What I'm saying is like the top, top producers. Right. Right. Whereas, you know, that kind of retains those middle to lower producers, you know, which is fine because you can because I mean, let's face it, that is out of the 20 percent agents who sell. I'm, I'm sure we're talking about you know, 90% of those agents probably fall in that category. So if your business model right. fits the, uh, fits the model to cater to those 90% of people who are average agents, or maybe even a little bit above average, I'm not saying your average, your agents are average. No, I'm just no. saying they can't be like the highest of producers with the most ambition to really take over, you know what I mean? Or they wouldn't be on a team. You know what I mean? But, but well, Ricky, Ricky, what, what uh, about, you look at Ryan Serhan, or well, I guess it's a bad example because he just did his own thing, but like Frederick Eklund, whatever, even all these people, even you, you guys, right? You're working, for, you're working for somebody. I mean, in theory, right? EXP, you don't own 100% of it. So, you know, you could be doing 10 million, 10 million in GCI if you believe in the brand, if you believe in the, in the business and the culture, and there's mm -hmm. enough resources for you. It yeah. doesn't matter what your GCI is, you know, why wouldn't you leave the elements or the, the Keller Williams or the compasses, you know? They so do. They real. do. They do. And that's why I left Remax because I was paying them 70 grand. And now I made it. Now I made an extra three hundred thousand in my first year. You know what I mean? Two hundred in cash, one hundred in stocks. You know but, what but, I mean? but Ricky, so so here, here here's where I kind of take Dan's stand. So essentially, if you have a team leader who's giving you the support, the training, they're even providing leads and they're providing the leverage that you need to go out there and sell more real estate. There's always the analogy that hundred percent of nothing is still nothing. A lot yeah. of these agents, when they join our team, they're doing nothing on the route. And you yeah, can give them one hundred and fifty percent. Totally agree. Totally agree. What I'm saying is, is that business model, and it's smart because it caters to the ninety percent of average agents. I'm just saying the ten percent, the one, the one percent of one percenters aren't going to be on a team. That's what I'm saying. Right? Like, you know what I mean? And my, in my road to ten thousand, I retain the top one percent of one percenters. You know what I mean? Like, I want the one percent of one percenters. I don't want right. to. You know, I, I want to help. I want to help those average agents. You know, dude, listen. I spend countless hours every week, countless hours with brand new agents that never sold anything, not that are on my team, that are with other agencies that I, I, I pour my heart out. I don't try to recruit them. I just try to help them. So trust me when I say I spend, I probably I'm the most dumb person on this podcast when it comes to how I spend my time. Okay. So don't get it twisted. I'm not saying I'm the genius of all this. I just love to, to, to look at the different models and try to dissect, you know, the different situations to really get down and dirty because I want to build the most efficient business I can build that's going to help the most people. And so right. that, that's what it all comes down to in the end. So no, I agree with it. I mean, you're, you're retaining 90% of the not top one percenters, right? I mean, I've been feared to say that you guys would agree with me that the top 1% of agents aren't going to be on one of you guys' teams. Correct. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Look at this. Drink, drinking his uh his fresca drop mic. <laughs> was sponsored by fresca. That was like that was you know, that's crazy. <laughs> they need to. They need to. They need to holler at your boy. So 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 then back to your secret sauce, right? Everyone thinks you have the secret sauce because you're the hot shot. You got the social media. You're doing these multi million dollars listings. You're putting 10, 15 deals on the contract. You mentioned it was hard work. Define what hard work is, because I feel when people say hard work, they think. They, they get up early. They, they, they stay up working until 10 o'clock at night. Like, what does hard work mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just being, I was willing to do things that other people weren't. And whether that is waking up at 4 a.m. Or, or working until 11 o'clock at night. I mean, we're both younger in the business. So we both have friends that are, you know, they're in Tulum. They're going away every other weekend. They're partying every weekend. They're, they're drinking themselves, you know, three, four nights a week, partying, whatever. And uh, to me, hard work was, was ignoring all of that you know, channeling out all the noise and just putting my head down and, and grinding. And whether it was making cold calls five days a week, six days a week, whether it was door knocking, whether it was just working 100 hours in one week and, and literally just being obsessed with real estate every single week. That to me is what, what I thought hard work was. And when I tell you that I have literally almost killed myself from working so hard in this business, I mean it because it's not a difficult business, but all you have to do is just put a little bit of effort into it. And that's what you get back out of it.
So ignoring the parties, ignoring all the weekends and, and doing the three open houses every Saturday, Sunday, to me, that was the hard work. Watching Ricky's podcast, listening, educating myself. If, if I had a, a half hour to myself, I would be listening to something. I'd be educating myself. I wouldn't be, you know, putting or, or playing golf or whatever. It was just. How old fun. are you, bro? I just turned 27. 27. And what did you do before real estate? Before real estate, I was a restaurant manager. Before re before real estate, you're a restaurant manager. Oh, I bet that really helped you. I was my bartender. I was bartending. I bet you. I bet you that really helped you out. I was a I was a server at a seafood restaurant for a little while, and I swear, like walking up to the tables, asking them how they're doing, saying a few jokes, getting their drink order, get getting what they want, and making them happy. Uh, mm -hmm. like I tell a lot of like teenagers and stuff, like get a job serving tables. If you want to learn to be a good real estate agent, go get a job serving tables so you can get your license and learn those people skills of talking to people and dealing with problems and people that are unhappy for a moment because their steak was too well done or, you know, it <laughs> took too long to do this or that, you know what I mean? Dealing with those little <laughs> issues and stuff. What's that? I eat my steak very well done, just so you know. I was gonna oh, you know. very uh, well done. Very okay. well done. Like, like, yeah. like burn. It's What's the deal with that? Are you just like worried Spanish about? Spanish person thing. We just like to make sure it's, it's properly Spanish. well cooked. Yeah. Oh, God. Here we go. Well Here we go. Well done. Dan, listen, this dude is Italian as it gets. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. Like, he eats his lasagna well done. So, um, all right. Well, cool. Um, I, I agree with you, though. I think coming from the hospitality industry really – you know, kind of lobbed me a softball to get into this business. And a lot of the agents on my team, you know, did come from bartending or serving as well. And even mm -hmm. some of the top agents on Long Island, you know, that we know, Mike Murphy, Beth Lowe, Charles Weinrob, uh, they all came from the hospitality industry as well. So it was definitely a really, really good uh, precursor to real estate. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Well, I'm, I'm just excited to see you and what you're going to do over the next couple of years. Thank you. I mean, Appreciate you really built something quick. I mean, you should be able to get to up to a hundred million, huh? Is that the goal? That's the goal for this year. We are uh, on pace to to exceed it. Believe it or not, it's freaking um, awesome, man. It's, it's you know it's great to see, and I mean it's the same thing. Juan, with you, you know it's your your guys' team is probably the closest, in my opinion. You know, or you actually Juan is always one step ahead of me. Like I'm thinking about going to the Hamptons. Juan's like I call Juan. He's like, yeah, I'm sitting in West Hampton right now on the beach. I just got a condo. I'll be here for the next two months. I'm like how, how did this already? You know, or like Miami. He's like, yeah, I'm down in Miami right now. Uh, you know, opening up a team down here. So. You know, Wands are always one step ahead, which I love. So, so, so Dan, let, let, let me ask you, do you plan out your year in like 12 months first? Like, do you have a vision board and you're like, I'm going to hit this for the next year? Or do you have something like similar to myself where like, I have a five-year plan set where every year people are resetting and kind of saying like, oh, I'm going to hit this this year. I'm just on track for the next five years from something I wrote like three years ago. Like, where are you at with things like that? Yeah, everything I do is, is two to three years out. Um, I think it's a little bit, I mean, of course you want to have like your smaller goals, right? Like I want to buy my mom a house. I wanted to buy my stepfather a Harley. I got that done. I wanted to buy my own personal house. I did that. But most of my work-related goals, business goals are two to three years out. So whether it be expansion, whether it be, you know, whatever whatever it is, everything I'm doing is even, even I post something on my story. I'm thinking two to three years out. So everything is very similar to you. It, it's It's future. What's the, the, the long-term plan? Like we're talking 10, 20 years from now. Like, why did you get into real estate? There has to be something, I guess, fueling you, which is why you work so hard, right? Right. Um, I don't know what that's going to be just yet, but I know that it, it's I was surrounded by wanting to help and, and feeling that burning passion of wanting to help people. So, you know, whether it be coaching like Ricky, whether it be starting a brokerage with 10,000 agents, like you, you know, I don't really know just yet. You know, I'm, I'm kind of still figuring out, you know, and maturing, we just turned 27. I mean, Juan, you got to be the same age, right? Yeah, I, I turned 28 in July. So you're, I think, a year ahead of me, right? You're younger. So yeah. you're, mm -hmm. you're still figuring out life. You know what I mean? We're still, yeah. we're still maturing. We're still seeing the world. So I don't really know where I'm going to be in 10 years. I just know that I want to continue to be able to help people, whether it be consumer or the agents on my team. Um, I want to be able to continue to- Here I am, bro. Here I am. This is me. This is you in 10 <laughs> years right here, bro. Here, here I am. With a fresca bottle like this. Like, <laughs> Yeah, oh, yeah. Man, you better start picking up kite yeah. surfing, man. <laughs> yeah, listen, that, that's really that that's what motivates me, being able to help consumers and also just like you said, like you spend all this time with people that aren't on your team, you're not even recruiting. I cannot even tell you how many minutes, hours a week I spend on the phone with somebody from Florida that I'm not recruiting, or you know, talking to somebody in California who just got their license. I'm not recruiting them. You know, it's just you put all this good energy out into the world and you do good by other people. It comes back to you one way or another tenfold.
So, you know, helping for the sake of helping, not just for the sake of building business. You know what I mean? <laughs> Which in turns comes back to building business, right? So it's kind of weird, but you know, like just doing things without expecting anything in return. That's when your social media start to really take a turn upward. That's when your, your business really starts to explode. It's just like you said, good things going into the universe coming mm -hmm. back to you. Yeah. I learned it at a really young age. I was fortunate. You know, I didn't really grow up with, with a whole, whole lot. You know, my, my mom barely made it by. She was a single mother. My father, you know, taught me at a very young age, philanthropy. You know, we always used to go to the uh, soup kitchens and give back on Sundays. There used to be times where my, my dad would get a check for a thousand bucks. It's probably the only thousand dollars he had. And he would go down to the lighthouse mission, which is a local, um, you know, down over here on the Island. And he would go get $500 back, you know? So he, he instilled that my, my parents instilled that into me at a very young age. And it's so true. If you, if you do it for without any monetary benefit or whatever it may be, it, it really does come back to you. So. Yeah, man. Love it. Now, if, if you're putting others first, man, it, the universe is going to reward you in, in hundreds of ways. Um, oh. What would be your advice for new agents who let's just say got their license yesterday, right? They want to go out there, crush it like you did. They want to go out there and have their own team one day. What would you do from day one to succeed as fast as possible? Day one, I would make sure I'm educated so I would know what I'm, I'm doing, right? So maybe watch a, a Ricky Carruth YouTube video or get on there, subscribe. Um, I would outwork everyone else. I would choose a way to differentiate myself from the competition. So ways that you and I have succeeded are maybe a little bit different than others, right? Like maybe it's a, a newer model with this video stuff. I think we were a little bit ahead of our time. I think the first time I ever met you was the first YPN event. You had a camera crew with you. That was two and a half years ago. You know, and now look at everybody doing videos. So find a way that you can differentiate yourself from the other 45,000 agents that are, whether it's Long Island, California, you know, whatever it may be, you have to be able to be different. You have to be able to stand out. And educating yourself is super important too, because then when you start getting the business and people start messaging you and calling you, you have to know what you're doing. And then the last thing is as simply as being a good person. Literally that simple. Be a good person to other agents, to other people, when you're literally at Stop and Shop or Food Lion, whatever we have down in Alabama, right? Be a good person and it'll come back to you tenfold. People will like you. They will want to do business with you and they will want to refer you, whether it's just a conversation at Stop and Shop or whether you sold a million dollar house. So that, that would be my advice. Where, where are you? I am in my basement at my house. <laughs> no, I mean, like what state are you in? Um, I'm, in uh, I'm in New York. Long Island, oh, you're York. in New York. You're in New York. Cool, cool. What part? Upstate, Manhattan, Long uh, Island? Uh, Suffolk County, Long Island. Cool, cool. Sweet, sweet. Yeah. I didn't know what, I guess you were just trying to figure out what we got down here. We don't got much. I mean, there's a couple of little gas stations with some ribs and. You have food you know, line? Kinda, you have any chicken grits at the gas station? Kind of. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much. Yeah. Those are, my, those are my favorite. I grew up roofing houses with dad and we would, we would literally eat at gas stations. It was nuts. You know, it was nuts. But. Now nah, I've been up to New York a couple of times. I love it up there. It gets too cold for sure. But um, hey, I'm coming up. I'm coming before this year's out. I'll be up there. I'm gonna come up there and do another event and um, yeah. have some fun. You know, see you guys. I miss you guys. You know, I miss you guys. I'm gonna, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna insert an "I love New York" emoji uh, right, right on this point of the uh, the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, man. Well, look, bro, it was good to chat with you for a little while and learn a little bit about you and your business and everything. And um, like I said, I'm just looking forward to uh, watching it continue to grow and Thank you. Um, all that good stuff. You know, it's it was a very interesting conversation. I really enjoyed it. So thank you. Thank yeah. you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. It was yeah. an honor to be here. Anytime. And Dan, how can people find you? Because uh, like I said, your social media is popping. Like what's your handle? How can people get uh, connected with you? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's D-A-N-O-N-E-I-L underscore at, at Dan O'Neill underscore. Find me on all social medias. You know, you have my contact info there. Thank you for plugging that. I appreciate it. You got to find me somebody in Morrisville, North Carolina. Speaking of road to 10,000. Ricky's on it. Ricky. Yeah, what, do you, what, do you, what do you need? Uh, I need a, a, a listing agent in Morrisville, North Carolina. Just, just email me, Ricky at zero to diamond com, and I will hook you up with somebody. All right, everyone. So thank you so much for tuning in. My recommendation is you reach out to Dan. Dan has some of the best content and the best tips that you could have as a real estate agent. Uh, I've been lucky enough to watch his growth over the last couple of years, and he's absolutely skyrocketing out of the real estate stratosphere. Uh, once again, make sure you tune in and subscribe. 
on Gold Bar and on the Zero to Diamond channel. And uh, once again, me and Ricky uh, respond to all DMs. So you can reach out to me directly at Latino Agent. And Ricky, where can they find you? I'm at, at Ricky Carruth, guys. So just hit me up there. I'm answering all my DMs still somehow, some way. And we'll see you guys. I'm doing that. That's <laughs> ludicrous to me. It's literally two hours a day. Two hours a day, bro. It's about an hour in the morning, an hour in the evening now. It's kind of how it's working out. So as soon as I start hitting the, hitting the road again, I think it's going to get out of control, you know, because I'm going to be, I'm going to have so many new people coming into my ecosystem and, you know, knowing who I am and hit me up. And so I think, but there again, I'm going to be. On. So I was just talking to Eric, uh, the broke agent about this because I have 78 requests, let's say, right. That, you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately right now I don't have the time to maybe interact with all of them. Mm -hmm. And Eric, I mean, obviously with his, his account, you know, he's got thousands literally sliding down. So we were talking about it. Do you think that it negatively affects your engagement? If you, aside from people just commenting and wanting to in interact, but do you think that the algorithm it interrupts it if you don't answer them back? No, it's a good, it's a good question. Cause I, I've thought about it as well. I don't think it'll negatively, in, uh, what do you call it? Affect you. But the people that message you are usually your greatest fans and they're the ones liking, sharing and posting your stuff. So right. if you don't answer them back, they probably stop doing that. That'll probably kind of affect it indirectly. Yeah. 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 I think that, I think the, like the interaction with your fans wow. is where you win, you know, yeah. but as far as the, the algorithm, I don't think so. I wouldn't too much worry about that, you know, anyway. Eric's crushing it with the algorithm, by the way. I mean, he's doing crushing. incredible, incredible. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, um, no, answering those DMs, I think, is one of the – like Gary V. he answered every single – he responded to every single tweet or whatever, every single mm -hmm. something for like – for like, for like between like 07 and 2011 or something like that, every single one of them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just like, and these agents are reaching out, pouring their hearts out, you know, they're telling me how much things are helping them or they're asking questions they desperately need answers to, you know, and like, I'm not really the only guy that can really sit down and really tell them the real thing, the real deal, mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, it's, I made it like part of my job now, you know, just answering right. those messages and it's just uh, continuing to build a brand. So you guys hit me up there, please hit me up. Don't think I'm getting too many. I can't answer. I want you to message me and um, reach out and say hello or ask questions and all that good stuff. So we'll see you guys on the next episode. Take care.